So we are delighted to have with us Robert Snyder, uh, the composer of the piece that we just heard. Um, Robert, tell us how and why does a successful businessman like you make time in his life for music? Well, um, you know, we have to make time for the things we love, um, people and things and art. So um, like yourself, if you've been involved in this endeavor, musical endeavor. I mean, you couldn't shake it if you wanted to. So it's just, it's just part of you. And uh, the piece we just heard, the, the setting of Psalm 1, when and why did you compose it? Well, uh, you were uh, developing a concept of Psalms. You asked if I would uh, contribute something. I said, what should I do? And you said, well, you know, it's up to you. Uh, uh, why don't you stay in the jazz mode? And I said, there are 150 songs, so we, we would start. So I had this idea, uh, the world does not need another D minor Jewish piece. I was going to take the first 10 songs, and as I kept moving along, making notes and so on, I finally said, what the hell are you doing? I mean, I said, this, this will take me years to do. I said, no, I can't do that. So I stopped at one. Psalm 1 is really interesting. It doesn't talk about wars. It doesn't talk about uh, societies falling apart. The words are very in introspective and also very poetic. It lent itself to some interesting things. For example, the um, measure, I think it's a second or third measure that goes into 5-4 allow that stop. Happy is the man who walks not in the council 
counsel of the wicked. You know, so I could have written it differently. I could have just, you know, punctuated the word and kept it going. But I thought by adding that extra beat in the measure gave it greater emphasis. I, I love that it's a bilingual piece, that you've got both the Hebrew and the English going. And some of that is your own translation, right? Yeah, that's my own translation. But, you know, um, it's somewhat disingenuous for me to write uh, in Hebrew, a language that I don't speak. Uh, I've written a lot, a lot of pieces. I've probably written, I don't know, 40, 50 pieces in Hebrew. Prayers, set, prayer settings. Now, when I do it, when I do write in Hebrew, I really, I ask people and I say, you know, how does, you know, say this? I mean, you know, I have prayers that I can say by heart. I don't know what the hell I'm saying sometimes, but uh, they, they mean something to me. Since my audience is are American, I, we owe it to them to have them understand what you're writing. So what, what are some of the differences when you compose a liturgical setting and something that is completely secular? Do you approach it differently? Is there a different style, do you think? I would say uh, not. When I, when I write, I usually start with a lyric or sometimes it's a partial lyric so that gets, gets me started in a certain direction. And then, then the music and the lyric kind of you know, parallel each other. But I usually start with a lyric. So whether it's liturgical or or uh, or not, um, it's it's the same dynamic. What's driving me is sound, really. It's it's the sound of music and the sound of the lyric, and and trying to marry the two together. So, um, Robert, do you think there's so. such a thing as a Jewish sound? Does any of your music sound Jewish? Yeah, there are there are tropes and you know, cantillations and so forth. But um, that what makes Jewish music Jewish is context. What's happened in America is that we've we have all of it. You know, we have all the all the different sounds and cultures. And and uh, I mean, you know, you can have that Oriental sound. You know, the of the um, the minor third and the and the flatted fifth, um, but that's you know a, a, an Oriental sound. It's not uh, specifically Jewish. It is Jewish, but it's not specifically Jewish. Robert, most of the time, I think you play piano as a as a soloist. Sometimes you'll work with a singer. What was it like to work with a whole chorus this time? And and you not only composed for, but you were there at the piano uh, in the performances um scary um <laughs> why because um i never took piano lessons so um you know i never relaxed into it the way i would have liked to the other thing is i'm a big faker so that uh when i when i play what i play uh it's rare that it's the same all the time i mean it was a it was a wonderful experience really it was a wonderful experience uh, well, it was one, it was wonderful for us as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add, Robert? You know, my uh, association with Zamir has been just uh, wonderful from a lot of perspectives, and and uh, it's just great, great uh, experience for me.